Hey there, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining me for my latest art broadcast. Let me get just the camera here a little bit. So, so it's been a while since I've done a live, live art broadcast here on YouTube, and I'm so happy to be back, and I hope this works. So um, before, I had to stop doing my broadcast because uh, my iPhone 6 was like, I think the problem was with my phone. It kept gagging. It uh, it would digitize, like after 20 minutes, the whole screen would digitize, and and the, the broadcast was like lost. So um, I uh, so I stopped doing them for a while because, you know, what's the good of doing a broadcast if it's gonna be digitized? But now got the new iPhone 10 and I'm hoping we won't have that problem again. So um, let's see, I wanna make sure everything is set here. Um, I'm not sure if there are any, I saw some comments just, a, oh, there they are. Okay, cool, cool. Wanna make sure I can see the comments. Uh, so I can address your comments um, when I while I'm drawing. Now, mind you, a lot of my focus is going to be on the art, and I'm going to explain to you my processes here of what I'm drawing. And today, as mentioned in the title, I'm drawing Gwenpool. I'm going to do a Gwenpool illustration because I thought she'd be kind of fun to do, especially with her mask off and with the hair. And oh, there are the comments, awesome. And so I want to get that blonde to pink. Now, I don't know if we'll have time for color today, but we'll definitely try to get as much of the line art done today. And since a lot of folks my focus is on the, the line art and explaining to you how my process. I might not be able to address all the comments and questions, but hopefully if there's time, I can do a Q&A at the end of this broadcast. So stick with me through the whole broadcast if you can. So enough jibba jabba, let's flip the camera around and let's get to drawing. All right, so I got a piece of board here. Let me readjust my rig. Pardon me for the jostling here. Pulled up some Gwenpool reference on my iPad so I can make sure I get her costume right. She's a character I've drawn a few times on some covers, but I haven't really gotten to draw her a lot. And I'm way behind on the Gwenpool reading, so let's see. So it's gonna work here. I think so. Just a little readjustment here. So sorry, gang. All right. So it looks like we're set there. Now what I like to do before I start drawing, now what I have here is a smooth piece of uh, Nine, it's a nine inch by 12 inch piece of smooth Strathmore Bristol board. Strathmore Bristol board is one of my preferred brands that I use. Strathmore or Canson, C-A-N-S-O-N. I like both of those brands. So right now this is a Strathmore piece, this piece of Strathmore Bristol board. And, uh, but before I get into drawing Gwenpool here, I wanna, what I like to do sometimes is just like a quick sketch, just to kind of get a feel for a pose. Just kind of do some quick sketches here. These are kind of, can be referred to as gesture drawings, just trying to get the gesture of the figure. Just kind of helps me loosen up, maybe give me some ideas of what I want to do. Maybe she's holding some guns, one arm back, one arm forward, Possibly, I mean, I don't. there's no guarantee I'll go with this pose. But just something like that, pushing a little closer there, can just kind of help me get, get a feel for what it is I could or want to do. I wanna work in some foreshortening for more action so the head overlaps the shoulders. Maybe she's holding swords. Just get a feel, just get, just, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just something for me to work off of. So you just get the basic idea of, of the, the figure and the body and the, and the movement. Just try one more little pose here, and then we'll just see what happens today. I don't have a lot of structure for today's art piece. Just more, just wanted to get a, another live broadcast going, have some fun. And 
and invite y'all to join me. So we'll, we'll see what develops here today. Really appreciate y'all joining me here today. Really happy to be broadcasting again. Hopefully I can do this a little bit more regularly. So there are three ideas there. And I might use an amalgam of some of these ideas to make my finished drawing here. So let me pull the camera back just a smidge. There we go. And now what I'm going to do, because oftentimes in my videos when I do the pencil art, it's all scribbly and it's really hard to see. What I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to pencil this much like I would pencil, in some ways, pencil a regular comic book page where I do my scribbling in light blue line. I'm using a Pilot Color Eno mechanical pencil here. It's uh, light blue lead. So I'm gonna start here with some light blue lead. And hopefully you'll be able to see. So I'm gonna do all my breakdown, all my figure work, all, all like the structure, I should say all the structure work here in light blue. So you can see more detail in my pencil lines instead of all the scribbledy scratchily that I usually have. So starting with the head here, bisect the head. So I know which direction she's looking. There, there would be her eye line. I break down every, every figure this way. And then the neck here. And then the shoulder. Kind of get a bit of a line of action going here. Her spine. Just a, right now, just a generalized box for the torso, just to kind of get get the shape going. So I really want to have the body coming this way and then cutting back this way for a little bit more of a dynamic movement. Well, let's see, then we work in the pelvis. So the, the chest is facing, the face is facing this way, chest is facing this way, the pelvic's facing this way. So you got this twist to her body, which makes her a little more dynamic. Then we can have this one, what would that be? Her right leg coming forward. It's coming way forward. I'm really kind of pushing the perspective here in the foreshortening a bit. That would be the, the straps for her belt pouches. She has a pouch on her thigh, oftentimes. And the, this curve here helps me give the uh, get a feel for the sense of the volume of the thigh. We don't want any part to really flatten out. We want there to be a sense of volume. Then her shin guards here. And then the other thigh over here. So I've had life drawing classes, even though my work is not really life photorealistic. It's more of a, an American comic book style with a little bit of anime influence, just a little bit from when I was a kid. Um, whatever anime I could see back in the, back in the eighties as a child. Um, which wasn't a lot back then, far more now, but I haven't been able to keep up with what's out now. But I really did, I was slightly influenced by the anime style from back in the day, but more so the Western American comics. But, um, but I learned, you know, the generalized lengths of the butt, the, you know, the head to the torso, to the, the midsection, to the thigh, down to the feet. So, so I keep these things in mind. It's just continued practice. Okay, and then we'll just let the, legs and feet fade out there. So now that we uh, got that part of her body, let's see, find out where her chest is here. That's gonna connect to the arms. Rib cage there, navel, so we kinda know where the waist is to the hips. She'll have a belt right here. So all this stage here, this is what I do when I'm drawing my comics. I'm really scribbly with the blue lines. And then I have more detail in the pencil lines and then even more tighter detail when I go to the inks. So for the benefit of today, I'm doing scribbles in the blue lines so y'all can get a better idea of what my pencil lines are like. Maybe it won't be as tight as when I pencil my comics, 
definitely not as tight as when I pencil if another ink is going to be inking my work, but I rarely have another inker ink my work nowadays. So I like the idea of her pulling her swords out. So we'll have this hand pulling out her sword. So I'm keeping in mind the sword's coming off the back. So the sword's coming up this way and her hand's here. Then I can figure out how the arms would connect. I want to make sure I don't make the arms too long or too short. Sometimes I'll reference photos or real life so I can get an idea of how long would the arms be? How would they bend? Put the hilt on the sword there. You see a little bit of the scabbard. That pinky will be up a little bit. Now we're gonna get, once we get here, this this part broken down, we'll get into far more detail with the um, with the line art, with the uh, pencil art, art I should say. I gotta figure out what to do with this arm here. See the other sword is sticking up this way. A lot of this is like putting together a puzzle, so it can really require a lot of a lot of thinking, a lot of brain power to figure out the puzzle just right. I want to do something. I don't know something Gwenpoolish like checking her cell phone or taking a selfie. Maybe she's holding up her phone. Maybe she's looking at what she's about to, the reason why she's pulling out her sword, but her eyes will, so her face is kicking off to the right here, but her eyes will kick over to the left here at her cell phone. So we'll have a little foreshortening here because we want the cell phone up at a place near her face. And a reasonable, you know, we need to see people look, yeah, you know, I'll study people in real life and uh, like look at how people do things. I'll look at how I'll do things. Um, like, especially like when I'm watching TV, my wife will catch me making the faces of the face that I'm seeing on TV and it's her new game. She likes to, to catch me like, oh, you're cataloging a face, you're cataloging a face, I caught you. I was like, yeah, you caught me. It's true, it's true, I like that face, I like that expression and I'm mimicking it to kind of get a feel, like I can feel my face, like the muscles and like, like, how does it feel when that face is made? And how can I utilize that in my art sometime, someday? So uh, so I'll keep those things in mind. But just studying how things look or work in real life and trying to reflect that in, in the art. So here we have, it's a lot of foreshortening. The arm's coming down, but then the arm's kind of coming forward. So the arm isn't going to be, we're not going to see the full length like we do here of the forearm. Actually, this hand's a little big. And this is why we do the sketching out stage, so we can course correct whenever we need to. Okay. So I think this is getting the generalized shape down pretty well. Now what I want to do is rough out the face and the hair just a little bit more. So I've got my my Guri Hiru reference up. He, I loved Guri Hiru's art on um, on Gwenpool, on all all the work I've seen Guri Hiru do. But I really wanted to get that that hairstyle just right because it looks like a lot of fun. The blonde going down to the pink tips. Start to rough in the eyes. Yeah, someone asks, say, say uh, ask if I like memes. I like, I, I like memes, sure. I mean, when I get a chance to see some memes, I, I've enjoyed what I've seen. I don't have like any particular favorites or anything like that, but sure, memes can be really funny. 
Very interesting. I do like the funny memes the best. Let's kick the, just got this cute little Bob haircut. So I wanna get the hair flowing. Now, something to keep in mind, gang, a lot of people ask, how do you draw hair? I have such a hard time drawing hair. First thing is make sure you draw in the full head. Make sure you know where the top of that skull is so that the hair sits on top. Uh, a common mistake is to draw a face and then start to draw the hair. And if you don't draw enough hair, uh, it looks like the head is not fully formed. Or if you draw too much hair, then it looks like you got way too much head. So, so get your whole skull in there first and then build your hair on top of that. and reference real life hair too. Like there is no shortage of hairstyle imagery on the internet. You search hairstyles and like for whatever year you wanna draw, like, you know, present day, tons, 1980s, 1990s, 1950s. You know, you're gonna find tons. There's so many, so many posts about that. You know, the hairstylists are always posting that sort of material. So, you know, just working from that, you know, you can search for men's hairstyles, women's hairstyles, certain lengths. You can search like Bob haircut styles, Bob hairstyles for women, and you'll find tons. And, um, you know, so if you're drawing a, a Gwenpool and you want a certain look to the the, the Bob, then, um, you know, you search that and, and so that you can uh, build it. in the correct way, build, build the hair. Okay. So I've gotten pretty detailed here with my, um, I really should work in some of the, uh, parts of her costume, some of the elements like the stripe of the, uh, you know, the center white stripe. So kind of rough that in some, have those little buckles there. It looks like she has a seam that runs down the front. She's got the pouches and uh, so it looks like just one set of buckles. Deadpool has two sets of buckles here on his chest and then at the midriff, but she appears to just have one. We've got her G buckle, G for Gwenpool. Okay. I think I got enough here that I can work with so we can now move on to the tighter pencil stage. So right now I'm gonna start with this, uh, my trusty Rusty, and I say Rusty because this clip has totally rusted, but um, I've had this mechanical pencil for years. I don't know how long I've had it. Well over 10 years. Um, it's a Pentel Twist Erase mechanical pencil with 0.5 lead and HB softness. So we're going to come in with some tight pencil art now. So I'm going to start. I like to work on the Foreground, you know, things that overlap and then work my way backwards. So, so since the bangs overlap her face, I'm going to start with that. In fact, let's push the camera in just a little bit closer so you can get a little more detail here. Well, let me uh, fix the lighting here a little bit. Let me try turning that on there. Does that help? There we go. So I appreciate everyone hanging out with me here. And um, don't forget, I will be doing a Q&A here at the end of the broadcast where I can address some of your questions since so much of my focus is going on the art and explaining my um, process here.
So as you can see here, my pencils are far less sketchy than most of my videos here because I did all the sketchy work in blue line. So it now allows me to come in with the uh, graphite and really bring home these pencil lines. And this is often how I pencil when I'm penciling my, my comic book pages. Really, feel free to to um, turn the page as necessary when you're drawing. Get it to where you need it to be for when you're drawing. I'll twist and turn the page so I can get the right angle I need to bring my lines to where I want them to be. So we got the shoulder straps of her shark backpack. See, so I just start working my way down, overlapping things that overlap other things. Shoulder there. But it's all structured out ahead of time. As you saw, the time I spent with the blue line, structuring everything out, helps me know where everything is or supposed is supposed to be. Oh, well, you know what? Something I wanted to do was put her mask on top of her head. I think it's cute when she wears her mask like a little slouch hat. But since I've drawn in my full hair and and um, skull, skull and hair, I can easily add her mask. And it's going to bunch up, so I want to keep that in mind how it bunches. But I want to be able to see the goggles. Which would uh, oops, which would uh, fit right at the top of the top of the head. A little bit of the tail of the, because she has the, all the extra material at the top of her, her mask, kind of makes a little, little floppy tail, for lack of a better word. Let's see, then we see the hilt, or the handle of her other sword in the background there. Okay. So. Didn't want to forget that detail. The collar to her suit. When I'm penciling my hair, I, I like to leave, especially if it's a blonde person, I don't want to have too much dark in here. Uh, so I don't use tons of lines, but the further I get down towards the, the back of the hair, I use more lines to create a sense of depth. So things closer to the front, more open, but the further back, I want a little more concentration of lines and it, it gives a sense, uh, like I said, a sense of depth, which I, I really like. It also gives the viewer's eye more to play with gives a sense of shadow without putting in big, heavy shadows. Now, arcing down to her chest here. Again, another thing I study is like, you know, you can look up uh, like the the morph suits that people wear for their cosplays. And ideally, 
especially when you're drawing women's chests, you don't want to draw it to where it looks like they're naked and the, the costume's painted on, or that you draw each individual breast. Ideally, the cloth should cover over that to where it's it's not so it's not like a second skin. So keep that in mind if you want a little more believability to your figures. Keep in mind how the cloth overlaps. See, she has this one belt that runs up around the, her rib cage ish area. Oh, now I see it. She does have a second set of buckles. Okay. These little buckles here on her costume. There's a one just right there. I couldn't see it from my reference, but I just spotted it. And we got the buckle on the belt. When people ask what erasers I use, it's a Statler Mars plastic eraser, and sometimes I use an art gum kneaded eraser. Right here. Use one of these. You can just stretch it. And it's good for going in and going little doot doot doots. Oops. There we go, a little out of focus there. I wanna make sure we got back into focus. So now uh, I wanna make sure I put in the buckles on her. The buckles are, oh, it's more of a pocket. You know, those, those little pockets on, on backpacks. They go right on the strap there. I wanna draw in one of those too. Let's go back up here to the head and work that mask in. Probably only going to have time for the pencil art this this uh, broadcast because I don't want to rush. You know, I want to do the best work I can and really let y'all in on, on the process. So we'll probably just do the pencil art this time, probably do inked art another time, and then do color art a time after that. So, uh, so this will probably be a three-parter at this rate. the black parts of the goggles there and see I've got these wrinkles here because the mask is bunched up onto her head. You want to play with those shapes. It's all about shapes. Okay, let's uh, let's get the face penciled in here. So I already have the, uh, so I switched now to the, uh, the Unikura Toga 0.3 HB lead mechanical pencil. The thing about Gwenpool is that she's got these big eyes Big youthful eyes, very expressive. So I'm definitely gonna play to that. Got her eyebrow there, and then I know where the bridge of the nose is, right through there down to the tip of the nose. But to keep her a little more youthful, I'm not gonna draw in that bridge. I'll probably define that more in the color. 
I'm just mostly going to draw the, 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 the tip of the nose and the nostril here from this side. That's all that's really needed for the, for the nose there. We let the, the viewer's eye fill in the blanks. It's not like she doesn't have a bridge to the nose, but it's such a smooth transition that, that the, eye will, the, the viewer's eye will fill in that blank. We, we allow some things for the, the viewer eye to, to fill in the blank. If we've already structured everything out and we know where things are going to be, we're following along with how the face would be shaped. You know, I just don't draw in two eyes and throw a nose in just randomly. You know, I've structured it out. And then the, the mouth here. It's the top lip. Let me see a little tooth here. Maybe she's sticking out her tongue. On the bottom lip, don't have to draw on the whole bottom lip because I know where it's going. So I'm just just showing as much of the shape as necessary. A lot of this comes with trial and error. You kind of figure things out as you go. So the size is a little more, a little more, a little half closed where this other eye is it's a little more wide open. You know, kind of how you do that, kind of have the one wide eye and the one. Kind of half winking eye. Going back to my blue line pencil just to make sure the pupils and irises are right where I want them to be and both facing in the right direction and both the same size. Eyes are critical, really, because we connect with the eyes, I believe. So make sure you, you get the eyes to match up. Because if they don't match up, it might look like she has a concussion or something, like she got clocked in the head and the eyes are dilating in a weird way. And that's a little highlight right there. We go. So the face is really coming together there. We got the hair here, and it'll, it'll be, really be fun when we get to color because all this here, this whole bottom portion of, of her hair here on the sides, that's all going to be pink that merges into the blonde, and it's so fun to uh, blend those together in the color stage. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so back to the, the the costume in hand here. I really want to, and this I'll do this when I'm uh, drawing comics, is I'll be working on the pencils and I get to an area that I need to focus on next and realize, you know what, i got to flesh this out more. I've got to figure out the puzzle a little more. And that is the, um, the fingers here. I want to make sure the fingers are holding on. Keep snapping my, uh, ah, my lead. Got here, broken lead. Just click out. Oop. There we go. Just click out some more lead here. This is why I like using mechanical pencils. I don't have to sharpen as much. All I have to do is click, 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 click. So I want to figure out the hand. And having studied hands, our knuckles rarely go straight across. They go kind of boop, boop, up, and then down. They kind of arc. So I want to reflect that arc in her hand. Though I was just showing you my left hand, and this is her right hand, but, you know, I would study my right hand for drawing her right hand. Cell phones. So much easier to draw than those old-school landline phones. They're just rectangles now. Thank you, technology. 
handsets were not always easy to draw. Little camera part there. We have our gauntlets here with the straps on the gauntlets. Make sure those are arcing around. So I really, I really figure out that uh, that that one area I need to draw next pretty well, so that when I go into it, I can um, when I go in with pencils, and then of course when I go in with inks, I've already got that part of the puzzle figured out. Now I think someone had asked, "Have I seen the uh, Captain Marvel movie?" Yes, yes, I did. I uh, actually got to go to the premiere, and um, here in LA. So uh, it was. I really enjoyed it. I really looked. I liked it, and I look forward to uh, you know to Endgame now. But you can't believe it's almost time for Endgame. So as you can see here, like with the hands and with the fingers, I, I, you can see, see, lightly see these lines. I've broken down each, each part of the digit from knuckle first and down to where the fingernail would be, even though she wears gloves so we won't see her fingernails. It helps me figure out how, the, how and where the fingers are bending from or to. See, and then she's got her gauntlets. This is where it gets a little tricky, but that can be the fun of it. Is the how the, the foreshortening works. And really, really arcing that, that strap that goes around her gauntlet. It's going to be far more circular because it's coming towards us. So you know the forearm's coming down here to the elbow, then cutting, or the upper arm is coming down, and then the forearm is cutting towards us. Then she's got her little white sleeve part separates from the pink part. A little bit of trim. I'm gonna grab my triangle now. It's a drafting tool. So I can get nice, clean edges to her cell phone here. Drafting tools are very important in drawing comics. They're good for drawing panel borders as well as backgrounds and other objects that should have straight edges. And then see her thumb would be on the other side because she's flipping up on her screen or something like that. Yes, she does have buckles on these arm straps. So let's draw, start drawing in some buckles.
All right, so that takes care of the right arm. Let's go ahead and draw the rest of the sword over here. Boom, sword drawn. Didn't really rough in the shark, but kind of where the shark's fin and shape would be, so I can kind of fake it a little bit here. All right, let's figure out this hand here. Now I'm back, I have to go back to the light blue pencil and really take the little bit of information I put in before and, and get a little, take it up another notch really make it clear to myself, really get these fingers wrapping around the, the handle of the sword, figuring out the palm, that meaty part of her palm. Figure out the, um, just go ahead and rough in the straps a little bit more the gauntlet, and really figure out these, these fingers. Really let each finger have life. Like the pinky would be up, really think about it. It's not just, it could be just a fist holding, but having a little pinky up, a little, just gives it a, just a little more character. Maybe the index finger is coming up a little bit, but the ring and middle fingers are a little more down and just gives a little more life to your figure there, to your character. All right, now I got that roughed in. Actually, I just wanna just double check everything. I like to double check as much as I can, see if I catch anything I need to make a little bit different. Also keeping in mind the size relations. Maybe the arm needs to. Come out a little further there. So back to the Pentel Twister Race. I'm gonna to start to pencil in these, these digits. Just bit by bit. Really keeping in mind how these fingers will arc around. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of study and practice. See, I got the, don't like the angle of those straps there. Let's try that again. Let me make sure I got my, my curves the way I want them. Don't be afraid to erase. It's okay to erase. That's why erasers are invented. We need them to, you know, 
take away the lines we don't want and try again. For some reason, sometimes it feels like people feel like there's a, a shame to erasing, like you didn't have it perfect the first time. It's like, well, uh, of course not. We're humans. We need to erase. Putting together a puzzle. Sometimes you realize the puzzle's not working the way you want, so you erase and you try a different route, and hopefully it's better than, or matches up with more of what you were intending. So don't be ashamed in erasing people. If anyone shames you for erasing, then they just don't understand. It's okay to erase and try again. Because you're working towards an ultimate goal, a finished product. That's, and whatever steps it takes to get there is what is key. So no shame in erasing people, in case anyone feels that way. All right, now we're moving down to the midsection. And we have these, uh, these pouches that are gonna overlap there. Hello, welcome everyone, welcome. Appreciate the comments. Sorry I can't address many of them right now uh, since I'm so focused on the art and explaining the process. But do stay tuned at the end of the broadcast here. We'll do a, I'll flip the camera around and do a quick Q&A and try to address some of your questions. So do stick with me to the end of the broadcast if you can. Probably more than halfway done now. Because we're just now down to the midsection and the legs. Finish off this sword and uh, some of the details on her, the torso of her costume. I want to flesh out these uh, pouches a little more. Just these little tiny boxes. So I really want to work out the um, the flap, the little flap that overlaps. Let's go ahead and hit both sides. Gives me enough information to continue on. One pouch, two pouch. And since I figured out the, you know, I, I drew in the whole body first, I roughed it out earlier here. Um, I know how these pouches, I can then consider how these pouches would rest on her belt and on her body. And maybe one more pouch way over here that's wrapping around to the back, to the back of her, her body here. Let's uh, do the other side. Little shadow here from the pouch to the belt sort of area. See, we have that seam, or almost like a zipper that runs down the front. So I'm keeping in mind the running down the chest, the curvature of the way the material would be pulling across the breast, then 
to the rib cage or upper tor or upper abdomen coming down and I established the kind of that flow. So I'm going to keep riding that wave down past the navel, which I established right there to the center of her belt buckle. And then just a little bit here down and then we're golden. Let's go ahead and tackle these, uh, these little uh, buckle stud things that are on her torso. One and two. Then the stripe comes down the center. Bit of a trim. Let's see, like I said earlier, there I did find that there is a second set of buckles here. Kind of, they'll just fit right underneath this uh, belt. Okay, get myself the guidelines. The guidelines help help me. Know where to go, where to put my details, know what my shapes are. And how everything's going to bend and overlap. Put a few wrinkles here through the midsection. Since she's twisted and the costume kind of wrinkles up a little bit. So we have the white part, the, the pink parts that go on the outside. Continue that stripe all the way down. Now let's um, tackle the, the legs here. Rough in, rough in this pouch just a little more clearly. Keeping in mind the shape of the leg and how it would fit on the leg and then the strap. So it looks like here on this reference, she has one strap on this leg and then two straps on the other leg, like that asymmetry. Makes it very interesting. Then we have the thigh down to the knee here, and then down to the shin and the sh big old clunky shin guard, which we'll just see the top of it here. Maybe a little bit of the first pink buckle thingy. Okay, oops, wrong pencil. One, this one here. Still, it's going to go for the point three where I needed the point five. Oops, sorry if we were out of focus there for a second. And the buckle here on the leg strap, just continue to arc it around. A 
work it all the way around. Have the knee there, to the shin, to the shin guard. Really bringing this leg forward. And that little top, little rectangle of her shin. Shin guard, I should say. So it takes care of leg one. Let's go over to leg two and wanna get the <laughs> the blue blue pencil out again. Make sure now I, I draw on these muscle lines. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pencil in all these muscles. Uh, again, I'm just structuring things out, making sure I know where things are at, and uh, and I'm gonna choose the right shapes for her. But having figured out where everything is, I can draw. Pardon me. Accordingly, and I'm gonna. It's because I've done that homework. It it's gonna produce the. The results that I want without having to show every if I, if I were to draw in every leg muscle here it, she'd look more like She-Hulk and we don't need that level of of musculature here for someone like Gwen but just knowing the anatomy of it here for the most part just the just the high points it it uh, it can really help a lot and um, help me keep the, the the right shapes going so then we have just the start of her bottom leg here. But again, like this, le this, the left leg, this is going to fade out. Like she's just disappearing into the mist. So, um, what is that, a holster over there? Okay. So give a sense of a, of a gun there. Maybe a strap that holds the gun in while she's doing backflips and whatnots. I'll have some buckles here, at different, different spots, one up, one down, just to keep the asymmetry going a little more. Also, make it interesting for the viewer when we mix it, when it, 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 when things aren't always uniform, can be nice, can be interesting, because then it requires the eye to look at. A different place like if these it was nothing wrong with these buckles lined up but if they're if they're not lined up then it allows the viewer to see just a little something else you're going to see one buckle you're going to see the other buckle you might even realize you've looked at you had to adjust your vision to look at both buckles separately because you're taking everything in at once but um in that fraction of a moment, your brain recognized those buckles don't line up, even if you're not even thinking about it. You might notice it without even really noticing it, if that makes sense. So I can make it the asymmetry kind of fun, gives the viewer eyes more to play with. I get the shin guard going, just the top of that first pink rectangle. And then the kind of boot and strap area here, just a little bit. Just going to kind of get it started and then just let it fade out. Just like that. Let's finish off this holster here. Get a little bit of a, the, the hammer on the gun there, a little strap on top, keeping the gun from flying out because of those backflips I was talking about just a moment ago.
Okay, so now I need to finish off this sword here. Just double check my math here. It's always good to double check your math. I'm sorry about that gang, so it's just working on the finishing off that handle. And that sword comes all the way down. We'll see the back of the hilt over here. Maybe we'll see the other side of the this this sword comes all the way down. We'll have the hilt come all the way down. So sometimes I'll just kind of sketch all the way through to make sure that the, the sword lines up from where the sword is here. So just drawing this part here and then just drawing an end down here, it might not line up. So just rough it in, just get an idea, make sure the sword lines up all the way through behind her so that it lines up believably. It's just a little, little extra step, but like I said, taking the time to do the math, can really, really pay off in the long run, especially when you get to your finished product and you don't go, oh man, my sword doesn't line up. Well, did you do the math? No, I didn't. Ah, you gotta do the math. Do the math. It's worth it in the long run. You won't be as disappointed. You might catch your mistake before you make it. And sometimes mistakes get past us and those are our learning moments. And we try to keep that in mind for the next time. All right, so now let's, Get this sword drawn in. And the Q&A will be coming up really soon, gang, because we're almost done with the uh, pencil line art here. Appreciate everyone hanging out with me. Now what I'm gonna use is a, another drafting tool. Her katana has a little bit of a curve to it, so I'm gonna use this French curve. It's kind of like a curved ruler. It allows me to get just a nice smooth curved line. It's a great drafting tool. If you don't have any French curves yet, get some French curves. They really pay off. Also get some circle templates too. Those are beneficial for, for drafting as well. Circle and ellipse, the ovals, they're called ellipses, ellipses. Get some of those. You will need them. In your, in your art, especially when you're drawing backgrounds, vehicles, most, it, most any tech, from cell phones to computers and TVs and to furniture to weaponry. So I'm kind of lining up my um, my sword here a bit, making sure that the the scabbard. Hopefully I was using the word scabbard earlier. That's, I believe that's the correct term for, or the sheath. Some people say a sheath. Maybe it depends on the type of sword you're using, if it's scabbard or sheath. Is scabbard more of a pirate word? Or anyhow. What you use to hold a sword holder thingy. Put a couple of studs there on the, the scabbard. I just like saying scabbard. I just think it's a cool word. It's better than sword, sword holder thingy. I'll say that much. But that's again, that's my personal preference. Oh yeah. So we have the other katana. Lining it up from where it was back there. In fact, let's just go ahead and do a, just a, just kind of line things up through there. So if it's coming down through there, just double checking my math. <laughs> Gotta double check my math. There we go. So that's, this should line up fairly well. And use my French curve. There we 
we go. Setting a few more little details here and there. But essentially, this uh, this Gwenpool is, uh, I think we're set here as far as the pencil art goes. Let's pull back and take a look at, look at the work we've done here for the past uh, just over an hour. Not too shabby. Some pretty good work done for an hour. That's all the pencil art right there. So from here, next up would be the inked line work. I did pencil pretty tightly here with the graphite. We got a lot of blue lines on there, so it'll be... Got to be careful when I move to inks because we got a lot to um, just adding a few little more details there. Little 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 cross hatch rendering. And I'll do this every now and again. I'll when I take a look back or I, I pull back to take a look at it, the fresh eye starts to see things. Oh, I can beef these lines up, I can rework this. And rework that. So I will want to post a shot of this pencil art on my social media. So I'm going to go ahead and autograph it now. Because I always like to have my name on my work. So I'll just go right through here. We'll put the date on there when I finish it. Because right now it's a work in progress. So, um... So just pull back here a little bit to let you see kind of how, how everything has come together here. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll do a Q&A here to uh, sign off the show. So if you haven't had a chance to post your question, now would be a good time. And uh, get, some eraser, get rid of some eraser dust there. And um, we'll uh, try to address as many questions as possible. Hey gang, let me clamp back into the rig here. Whoop, sorry gang. There we go. Awesome. So let's see, where, all right, there, all, well, there were a lot, okay. I think the YouTube app has changed a bit since I uh, used it last, because I was like wondering where all the questions were. I was seeing very few comments, but I didn't have them actualized, so look forward to uh, going back through and, and checking out your your comments. Thanks so much for for uh, posting. So sorry I couldn't see most of these. Every now and again, one or two would would pop up, but then and then disappear. Uh, they weren't. Maybe I didn't have the setting right to where I could see all the um, all the questions and comments as as I was drawing. So we'll make sure we fix that for future broadcasts. But it's good to be back broadcasting. It's nice that the, the footage isn't digitizing. So definitely in a place where I can do more broadcast and hang out with y'all and do more drawing, do more arts here, like this shot of Gwenpool. She will be on my social media, so make sure you follow me on my social media. They're listed in all my videos, and I'll make sure I go back and add uh, all those links here in the video description for this video here, just in probably the next hour or so when we're done. And... Um, but you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. I'm at Todd Knock on Instagram and Twitter. Be sure you're following me on Instagram. I got tons of stuff I post there and um, and sometimes do 10-minute Q&A live streams on, on Instagram. So uh, so let's let's see if there are any questions here I might have missed. We'll just scroll back a little bit and, um, and um, we'll answer a few. Can't answer everyone's questions, unfortunately, but I'll try to answer as many as I can. Will I be working on any X-Men projects this year? I'm not working on any X-Men projects right now. Uh, right now, I'm working on Cosmic Ghost Rider. Hopefully, you saw Cosmic, Cosmic Ghost Rider Destroys Marvel History Issue 2 that came out just this past uh, Wednesday. It's the Spider-Man issue written by Paul Shear and Nick Giovanetti. They did a, it's a really fun, uh, really crazy, wild Cosmic Ghost Rider miniseries where he's infecting the timeline of Marvel superheroes. And I drew issue two, the Spider-Man issue, and um, I'm doing a little bit more Cosmic Ghost Rider. Can't say much more than that, but stay tuned for more announcements in regards to that. Let's see, is this drawing going to be Copic or watercolor? This will be a Copic drawing. I'm using Strathmore Bristol board here, so watercolor does, wouldn't work as well on here. This is definitely what I would use Copic for. If I, whenever I do my watercolor illustrations, I definitely use specific watercolor artboard. Come back here, comments. 
There we go. Let's see. In a video, when I was coloring Jean Grey, you said about some user giving away spoilers during Logan. Who was that user? I don't know. That was, what, two, three years ago? I don't recall. I don't recall who that was or even what the spoilers were. What is the favorite comic book that I've worked on? Oh, man, I've worked on a lot of awesome comics, so I don't have one favorite. Uh, getting to do Young Justice is definitely a career highlight. I love working on Young Justice. Uh, Spider-Man, of course. I've gotten to do tons of Spider-Man comics. I love Spider-Man. Been a fan since I was a kid. Love drawing Spider-Man. Uh, Nightcrawler, big X-Men fan, so getting to draw Nightcrawler with X-Men legendary writer Chris Claremont. Huge dream come true. Doing my creator-owned series, Wild Guard. It was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, doing the Mystery Science Theater 3000 comic. I'm a huge fan of the show, as you can see here, by my Crow and Tom Servo Pop Funkos and my Gizmonic Cozy, Cup Cozy right there, or Can Cozy, I should say, Gizmonic Institute. I'm a huge Mystery Science Theater fan. So being able to be a part of that comic series and get to befriend and work with the people who make the show, dude, it's a fanboy dream come true. So that's another project. So really, I, I love... Just about every project I get to work on because I love drawing comics. I love drawing superheroes. So um, so it's hard to say what's my favorite. What was this? the blue pencil I was using? It's the Pilot Color Eno. Pilot Color Eno. Of course, this is going to read backwards. Pilot Color Eno. I get these at jetpens.com. It's maybe two or three bucks for the pencil, and then I buy uh, the light blue lead refills. Is Impulse my favorite DC hero? He is definitely one of my favorite heroes. I love Impulse, absolutely, absolutely. Have I ever drawn myself with my with with my characters? I'm bound to have. I know I've drawn myself into a few comics in in the course of my career. Not often, but a couple of times. Uh, but I haven't lately. I haven't drawn myself with any of the characters I've known lately. Was this drawing from memory or reference? I, I came up with this pose. I came up with this pose at the beginning of the video, in case you missed it. I did some uh, some quick gesture drawings here. So, But I do study real life, so I do reference real life. I was referencing Guri Hiru's design for for her the details of her costume, like her hair and and uh, you know the, you know the buckles and belts, you know, one belt versus two belts. So I referenced that sort of stuff to make sure I got the details right. But as far as coming up with a pose, pure, purely imagination. But I'm also no, I also like drawing poses from real life too. So reference and imagination, both are critical. Would I ever draw an Ironhide or Wheeljack or a Transformers series if I had the chance to? I would definitely be interested in that opportunity or discussing that with, with the publisher. If that happened, would I record stream myself drawing an anime character like Jim Lee did? Uh, very possibly, maybe someday. Will this video be able to, uh, be available to watch later? It should be. If everything goes right, this should save to my YouTube account, and you can watch it whenever, however. If you miss the beginning, you can rewatch at the begin and, and catch the beginning. So yes, definitely this should be on my YouTube channel if all goes well. Double check to see if there are any other questions. Let's see, how do I keep energy in my inks? Make sure you stay tuned for my ink broadcast on this piece and we'll be getting into ide ideas and thoughts as such. All right, just checking here for any other um, questions I might see. I appreciate all the kind words, everyone. Thanks for participating and commenting throughout this broadcast. Storm and Phoenix look amazing on Instagram. Can we get a vid? Not for those pieces because they're already drawn. So I, you know, they're they're done. I can't. There are no videos for those. But I'm sure there'll be more X Men related videos to come on my channel because I love the X Men so much. When do we get to see a new character mashup? I should do another character mashup sometime soon. Absolutely. Hopefully in the not-too-distant future. 
How long do you usually draw in a day and in a week? I draw every day um, for work or for fun. I draw pretty much seven days a week because I love it. I have a passion for it. How many hours do I draw a day? For work, I draw anywhere from eight to 12 hours on average, usually five to six days a week, sometimes seven days a week if the deadline's just crazy. Um, but when I'm not drawing for work, I'm drawing for fun and I'm doing, you know, pieces like this. So, so I, I love to draw and it's, it's good to be drawing all the time. Have you had a drawing of mine turned into statues? Yes, I designed the Young Justice statues from, I think it was like the year 2000 is when they came out. They did a Superboy, Impulse, and Robin statue, and they all connect. Um, I did those uh, for DC Comics back when I was working on the original Young Justice comic book series. So yes, I have had my artwork turned into statues. It was a complete honor, and DC was kind enough to send me a complimentary statue of each of the boys, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was really cool, really super cool. Let's see. Something you struggle with when making your final art is difficulty erasing the construction pencil lines. How do I do it so cleanly? We're gonna get into that when I get into the next video here. Uh, sometimes what I do, and I'll probably do it with this one, is a pre-erase. You kind of start to erase before you start inking. So you take all those graphic and blue lines and you make them lighter so that when you ink, when you go back to do the official erasing, it's it's less to erase. So we'll hopefully that, that'll work out well. So we'll see, we'll see. I penciled pretty tightly here. Um, Oftentimes, like for my comics, I would scan, if I were drawing this for like for Marvel, like for print, I would scan this in, print this out in blue line on another piece of board and ink that. And it's possible I might do that for this one uh, just because it keeps my art cleaner and then I don't have to erase at all because it's all, the, 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 the line art is in blue and I can just, I can just ink to my heart's content and not worry about, you know, messing up the, the board or anything like that, which can, uh, you know, it can happen. Um, what, are my, what are my thoughts on the Titans and Doom Patrol shows? Haven't seen them. Don't have a DC Universe account. Haven't had time to see them or an opportunity to see them. So uh, I hear they're good. I'm glad to hear they are good and doing well and people are enjoying them, but I have not had a chance to watch them. Gang, I need to sign off. It's so good hanging out with you. Uh, thanks for joining me for my first live broadcast back in a long time. Uh, looking forward to... Uh, Stage two here of this Gwen pool, which will be the uh, inked artwork. And and yeah, we'll, we'll just keep trucking along. Hopefully I can meet up again with y'all here real soon uh, and keep the videos and live streams going. If you haven't had a chance yet, click subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos and live broadcasts. Just hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell to adjust your notifications to your specific preferences. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, be sure to like this video and, uh, feel free to leave a comment as well. And I appreciate all the comments and questions that y'all posted here during the broadcast. Again, sorry, I couldn't answer everyone's, but I do appreciate all the interaction. It means a lot, a lot, a lot. Hope y'all